Greetings everyone, this is Nori back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 46 and the difficulty it's been rated at is hard. This problem was asked by Amazon and let's just get down to the problem description. So given a string, find the longest palindrome contiguous substring. If there are more than one with the maximum length, we can return any one. And we've been given an example over here of the longest palindrome substring of AA, BCD, CB is BCD, CB. Basically the thing which I've highlighted over here. And there's one more example which is given over here. Um, unfortunately, we were able to find a similar problem on Leap Code. And again, I would urge you to pause this video and check out the link given in the description below and try solving this problem on your own. Um, as you can see over here, the problem description is the same that you've been given the string and you just need to find the longest palindrome substring in S. Um, and you've been given an example over here. So for B A B A D, uh, the output which has been returned is B A B. And ABA is also a valid uh, answer because that's also a palindrome, but since the length is the same, uh, any one output is valid. And we've been given another example, which is CBBD, uh, where the valid answer is double B. Now, what this is doing for us, these two examples, is sort of helping us understand one of the edge cases. And the edge case over here is the fact that you can have, uh, and by definition, the palindrome string can be either an odd length or it can have an even length and that's something which we must remember um, and that's one of the important things that's one of the edge cases which you know which we will definitely be considering uh, but the approach that we'll be using over here is something called as a center around approach uh, but that's not really important the, the important part is in how it works so basically what you do is you iterate through each of those elements so take this example for instance you'll go through each element and the way you sort of try to understand whether a random substring is present is by basically taking the center, that's the element that you're presently on, using that as a center and taking a left and a right index and just expanding them forward. So basically for left, you'll keep on going backwards, for right, you'll keep on going front, and you'll keep on doing this till the left and the right are the same values. So take A for example over here. So when that happens, uh, what you can do is, what you can check over here is the fact that left the left index and the right index are both the same so you could use that and you can store that value and then move forward from there uh, one other thing which needs to be denoted over here is the fact that we're returning the string itself and not the number so we'll be returning the string uh, cool so as we always begin we'll start with our base conditions we'll just say hey if nothing has been given to us in s we just return an empty string and now again all we have to do is we need to iterate through all the values and we don't really need the value itself rather what we need is the index so we'll just be using the index and the way to do that in python is like this uh, now we'll just stop over here for a while and we'll try to un understand that we need a helper function which can help us use the center around approach so let's just make that function and it's always a better approach if you sort of break down a problem into functions as well so let's just call this helper it's going to need the string and as I mentioned before it needs two indexes which is the left index and the right index. Let's just do that and all you need to do in this entire helper function is basically you need to do an iteration till the string is valid or till the string is the palindrome. So what this function is going to do is it's just going to return the palindrome which has been present. Cool. So the way to do that is just do a simple while loop. And there are multiple ways of writing this thing, but I like to write it like this. It's more easier to comprehend. All you're saying is that L needs to be less than zero, uh, and R needs to be less than or equal to L, which is the right index, and it needs to be less than the length of S. Again, you can break this down into multiple things, uh, but it, this just gives you a more comprehensive view of the thing. And the other, other condition, which is more important, is the fact that the left index element is the same as the right index element. And that's the entire thing that we're gonna go on. And now all you need to do is you need to decrement the value of the left index and you need to increment the value of the right index parallelly. And this loop will keep on running till the fact that SL and SR are not equal or any of these conditions sort of breaks out. Uh, and now over here, what we'll be returning is, is the valid palindrome. And the way to do that is the fact that you'll do <clears throat> SL plus one and R. So basically your 
you're not going to be including L for obvious reasons because L was the part where you where this condition was no longer sufficed or this, con this condition was not sufficed and due to that reason you do L plus 1 and you do not consider L and R as well will not be considered because the way spacing works in Python is that the second index which has been given over here um, is actually excluded so this is actually including R minus 1 and that's the way we're going to go about it and now all we need to do is we need to handle two operations one is the odd operation and one is the even operation basically for palindromes which have an odd length and an even length uh, we also need a variable called result and we'll be using that and all you can do is you can just you know create another variable and whatever the helper function is of returning you can push that inside the temporary variable and do the comparison forward what we'll be doing is the result is what's the maximum result that we've encountered so far or maximum uh, longest palindrome substring that we've encountered so far we'll be containing it inside the result variable so let's just do that let's just create a temporary variable let's just call self helper s and for the odd indexes the way you can sort of go about it is you can sort of consider the same thing and then move forward from there so basically the index that you presently add, you'll use that as the left and the right. So that's going to be a match. And then you're going to, you know, decrement this left and increment this right. And that's basically your odd iteration. And all you need to do is you just need to check whether the length of temp is actually greater than length of result. And if that's the case, that means that result needs to get updated. And this is for the odd palindrome, odd, odd length palindrome. And for the email and palindrome, all you need to do is you just need to update your indexes to do the exact same thing, but at a, at a value incremented of one. So you do i plus one over here. And again, if you don't understand what's happening over here, you're basically selecting a window of two and then moving forward from there. So let's just do the same operation that if length of temp is greater than length of result, you need to update your result accordingly. And now at the end, you just need to return the result itself. So again, the way operation would work is, as you can see in this example, you would go from one to basically at this index, which is, you know, numbers one, um, you will go, you will sort of check A with itself. That's okay, that's correct. And then you're going to check B with the, which is the left uh, with the right value which is also b and that's what you're going to return over here and for the even palindrome substrings the way it's going to work is you're going to be taking uh, a window size of two and then move forward from there so this cb is not going to match so it's going to break out this bb is going to match it's going to try to expand forward but it's not going to be able to and that's how we'll move forward from there cool so let's just run this code hopefully it should run fine Cool, and you can see that the output is the same as the expected output. Let's just submit this code. And awesome, you can see it's faster than 61% of the online submissions. There is a faster solution, and I'll be giving uh, a link to the explanation over there inside the description. So try checking it out. But to be very honest with you, in an interview, they're not going to expect you to come up with that approach. It's like, it's basically like, if you know it, you know it, otherwise you don't know it. And this approach, um, cool. So that's it for today's video. If you had any comments, you do leave it in the comment section below. And if you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to this channel. We are discussion over here and we would love to have you on board with us. And if you've already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it and have an awesome day. Thank you.